There really is no other game for the NES like Solstice. My sister and I shared our Nintendo Entertainment System, and given that we were five years apart, our game selections were wildly different. I usually opted for games based on comics or cartoons I liked, while Libby, who was not only older but way hipper than young me, would choose these weird off-kilter games like Fax Sanadu and, of course, Solstice. Pretty sure she knew about Taboo the Sixth Sense, we would have been doing daily tarot readings in our living room. My sister wasn't huge into video games, but she was way into Solstice. So much so that when she got to the very last screen of the game and couldn't figure out how to get any further, she called the Nintendo Hotline. Yeah, there was an official 800 number to call when you needed help beating NES games, for only $2.99 a minute. Well, she called it and guess what? Solstice was so hard that even the guys who were paid to know how to beat it couldn't figure it out. Solstice is a puzzle game where you run through a maze of dungeons trying to find pieces of a staff that will defeat the last boss. The bad guy steals your girlfriend trope is introduced in the opening cutscene, which features the most complex and I'd say greatest music on the system. This guy Tim Fullen did the music for a bunch of NES games like Pictionary, Treasure Master, and Silver Surfer, and they're all truly exceptional considering the limitations of the time. The Solstice opener is his ode to joy, reminiscent of prog bands like Yes. Seriously, check it out, it fucking rules. The gameplay works from an isometric viewpoint, which was used in other titles like RC Pro-Am, Marble Madness, and Snake Rattle and Roll. But in Solstice, it's much more faux 3D awkward than those games. Something I've never seen mentioned anywhere is that the game is much easier if you hold a controller sideways, so that left is now up, and up is now right. I think we read about it in Nintendo Power because there's no way we would have figured that out on our own. It sounds as weird now as it did in 1990, but for me it only adds to the unique appeal of the game. The graphics are pretty simple but well executed. Everything looks dark and surreal, from the caves to the gardens to these weird colorful crystal rooms. Think settings in the movie Labyrinth mixed with an almost 3D version of The Legend of Zelda, and you've got it. The enemies are really sinister looking, by 8-bit standards at least, and I found them terrifying as a kid. Some of that fear is because you can't attack any of them, just avoid. The other scary aspect of Solstice is that when you die, your body dissolves, your clothes melt to the floor, and you're met with the harrowing sound of this awful high-pitched scream. It's pretty bone chilling when you're 8 years old, and honestly, pretty bone chilling now when you're 38 years old. Alright, so you don't have any weapons, but you can run and jump, thus it's all about avoiding enemies and pitfalls in order to win. You also have access to 4 potions, which do everything from freezing enemies to making you invincible. Unfortunately, they only last for one screen at a time, and as soon as you leave a room they respawn, so don't expect these things to solve all your problems. I can never remember which one does which, and since their use is limited, I honestly forget all about them. At least until the very end of the game, when yeah, you definitely need to use them. The level design in Solstice is a huge confusing maze. If you ask people who played Metroid in the 80s, they'll tell you all about the intricate maps they made so they knew where to go, and for sure, Solstice requires a similar level of dedication. Also, like Metroid, there's no save system, but there's also no password system. You can find continue credits and extra men laying around that can extend your playthrough, but Solstice is a huge and very challenging game, and it might not be enough. You will die. A lot. And for that, I highly recommend this incredibly long code you can punch in at any time. As kids, I remember we had it written down our Solstice manual. This code gives you 90 lives and full potions. And you may be saying, James, that's cheating, you piece of shit. To which I can only say that, honestly, it won't make Solstice any easier. Just give you way more deaths to experience. Solstice is one of the coolest and most interesting games on the NES, although I understand why people get frustrated with this title. Its awkward controls take getting used to, the levels do sprawl forever, and the high difficulty hardly makes it an easy pick up and play. Just think on the bright side though, every time you get a game over, you get to rock out again to that sweet, sweet jammer of a title screen. BONUS! Hey y'all, if you like my channel and want to see more, I'm posting a bonus video every week over at patreon.com slash words, and then I'm also streaming every Thursday at 9pm Eastern Time, so come hang out. Thanks for watching.